Greetings everybody, my name is Lazarus Moises and our topic today is construction of piecewise chaotic maps with tunable statistical mean. So, uh, first of all, I'm going to discuss a little bit about the motivation behind the paper, uh, then give you some approaches to our solution, what we're trying to achieve, uh, our results, and then we will end up by discussing our future goals. So, what is this topic about? Okay, uh, first of all, let's discuss our motivation. Now, chaos is chaos based applications. Okay, nowadays chaos is everywhere. There have been numerous approaches for various applications uh, developed uh, at the moment. Uh, some examples I can give is data encryption through chaos, surveillance through chaotic systems and chaotic motion in jobs, secure communications where we manage to use a chaotic system to mask some information and transmit, transmit it safely, and also chaotic optimization. And there are many more applications as well. So in all of these applications of chaos theory, uh, random-like behavior is of essence. For example, in data encryption, okay, we need to have a chaotic source that is very, very, very random. So the question here that sounds silly but actually isn't is uh, how much randomness do we want? Okay. So the question, the answer is that uh, in most applications we need very good randomness, uh, but this is not always the case. So let me give you an example. For example, in evolutionary optimization algorithms, uh, they have some processes called immigration, migration, selection, and mutation. And these processes, which affect the way the algorithm performs, uh, are usually uh, done you know, in each iteration uh, randomly. So we have some sort of random variable, we compare it to a threshold, we obtain a yes or no result, a binary result, and depending on the result, we perform this sort of immigration, mutation, etc. action. So recently, uh, I think around the last decade, they developed chaotic optimization algorithms. And in chaos optimization, they replaced all of the random variables with chaotic variables. So if we do this uh, replacement, what does it happen? Okay. So one of those early works that reported chaotic optimization algorithms, uh, the authors found out that depending on the map that we use, uh, we may actually get very different results. So, for example, some maps, uh, they didn't perform a lot of immigration and selection and they had poor performance, while other maps, reported in the Gauss map, which ended up performing more and more actions of immigration, uh, ended up having a much higher, uh, you know, uh, performance, much better performance. And this happened because this specific map, for example, gave a lot more emphasis on exploration using uh, this sort of, uh, you know, immigration behavior and it did not stagnate into local optima. So bottom line is this, uh, using different chaotic maps, they ended up observing different performances in the algorithm. Uh, so what happened? All of these maps had different statistical characteristics. Okay, All of them had chaotic behavior, so the behavior was random-like indeed, but we had different bias. So that was the bottom line of the paper, you know. If we used map with different statistical characteristics, albeit all of them chaotic, we may manage to obtain different uh, behavior uh, in the algorithm. And of course, in some situations, we ended up having an improved performance over random-like behavior. Uh, so the, you know, uh, the motivation here in chaotic optimization algorithms is this. Okay, we can use any chaotic map, but will it be possible for us to use specific chaotic maps that we design that have specific controllable lay rate of uh, their mean value? Because if we can control the mean value of a chaotic map, potentially we can control the rate of actions like selection, immigration, and mutation. At the same time, of course, we can achieve randomness. And that was the goal behind designing specific chaotic maps for chaos optimization, where we can actually have, you know, can achieve control over their statistical randomness. So that was one of motivation to use uh, specific maps in optimization. The second uh, application, actually, that we're interested in is chaotic motion. Now, chaotic motion can happen either in discrete steps, like top, bottom, left, right, or in sort of a fluid motion. And, of course, apart from exploring a given space, we can survey a given space, for example, uh, as we say here in a chaotic camera situation scenario. So here, again, in chaotic uh, surveillance or chaotic exploration, we may have 
a desirable you know uniform exploration but in some situations we may have uh, a desired uh, scenario where the motion needs to be non uh, uniform so again to achieve this we need to have some sort of chaotic map as a randomness source that behaves chaotically but uh, in a non uniform way so again our goal here is to try and manage to create chaotic maps that have non uniform behavior chaotic but non uniform so how can we achieve this? Uh, we consider the very large family of maps that have three parameters. This is a very standard example here, the tenth map. But we had the modification on this generalized family of piecewise maps. What we did is actually uh, play with those three points right here, the A parameter, the B parameter, and the C parameter, and more specifically A and B parameters. And we found out that by appropriate uh, tuning these parameters, like moving them up or down and left and right, we can manage to affect the histogram of the chaotic time series. Let me give you an example. Here I have four different choices for A, B, and C. And in all of these different choices, the map behaves chaotically, but it has a different uh, histogram each time. So here, for example, it is uniform, but moving the A and B parameters more you know, in a skewed-like fashion, I managed to obtain a skewed light, a skewed light histogram. So in all of these situations, what we managed to do actually is manage to affect the mean value of the map and the way the histogram behaves. And that's what we're trying to achieve here. Uh, we are trying to create a large family of maps uh, that is very simple in structure and has very few parameters, three here, and actually one of them can be fixed. And we need to find a way, and we actually did that, uh, that tuning the parameters can give us can, can give us an expected variance in the mean value of the map. Uh, so let me give you an example here. For this specific map, we know that changing the parameter beta will actually make the histogram move from being uniform to being non-uniform. So what you observe here is that each time I increase a little bit the parameter beta, the histogram of the chaotic map becomes less and less and less uniform. Okay. So this is what we're trying to achieve, and not simply achieve it, but understand how we can control it. So for this specific tent map, for example, after we identify the parameters that give chaotic region, what you see right here is a graph that underlines uh, what uh, parameter pairs give chaotic behavior. So this black region here is the chaotic behavior of the map. And if for this chaotic region I plot, in each case, the mean value, you can see that I can actually manage to achieve just that. So tuning the parameters goes from a uniform distribution, so the mean value is around 0 0.5, to a non-uniform distribution, the mean value is around 0 0.85. So that's what we're trying to achieve. So if right now I take this map for different parameters and I use it in a chaotic optimization algorithm, each time I'm going to obtain a different result. And that's what we are going to do next. We are going to use these maps in a chaotic optimization scenario and see how does it behave when you know, the mean value is around 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and so on and so on. So that was our goal. And uh, we did it initially for this 10th map, but actually uh, we have a very wide family of maps and we see uh, how we can achieve similar results to different types of piecewise maps. So, for example, if we took another uh, map from the literature, from a recent publication, we modified this map, so uh, we tuned actually the A and C parts right here, uh, so we generalized the, the map from the literature, and we obtained similar results. Again, we have a very wide uh, range of chaotic regions, but in this case, we obtained these so-called uh, stream regions. They call them streams because they, because they look very weird, but actually, we see that the behavior kind of becomes interrupted by periodic regions. No big deal, we can actually solve that a bit later. And again, we get the behavior that we like. Uh, we have a very wide range of chaotic behavior, but the mean value changes. It goes from very low values, around 0 0.2, so a left skewed histogram, to 0 0.5, a uniform histogram, to 0 0.9, a right skewed histogram. So again, this is what we want to achieve and we manage to do it, right? Uh, we can get different parameter values, and for each parameter value, the histogram becomes either left skewed or right skewed. So using it in a chaotic optimization algorithm, we are going to obtain different results in style. And the same holds for chaotic path planning. 
And this is a second example of another map that we consider from the literature. Again, we modified it. So this map is again a novel map. Uh, we introduced it for the first time. And we again obtain a similar behavior where we can go from very low mean value to a very high mean value. So again, we can obtain this spectrum of possible histogram behavior from being left skewed to being uniform to being right skewed. So this is where we are at the moment. Okay. So, so far, what have we done? Oops, let me reshare my screen. Just a moment. So, what have we done so far? We have constructed a new family of piecewise maps. Uh, this is a very uh, wide family of maps. And the good thing is that we can have a very easy control over the statistical properties of the time series. So it is very easy to tune a parameter and change the mean value. Uh, so this is a very good thing, you know, regardless of the application at hand. Just from a mathematical perspective and a dynamical systems perspective, this is a very good result as it is. So what, we are, going, what are we going to do next? First of all, we are going to study a little bit if it is possible to define, you know, some sort of mathematical derivation for the mean value, because so far we have some you know, numerical analysis. It may be possible uh, to, you know, derive a mathematical formula for the mean value, although these maps are highly nonlinear. I'm not sure if it is possible, but we will explore it. Now, secondly, uh, we have a couple more piecewise maps in mind that we haven't reported in our paper due to uh, a short page length, but we have some more uh, maps developed that we want possibly to include in an extended version of this paper. And then what we're going to do is apply those maps for different parameters in chaotic optimization and obtain different results and see uh, in each situation when does the map behave uh, better and better. So this is, uh, this is going to be a very extensive work. I mean, I'm sure this is going to result in a full length paper, uh, hopefully during the summer, but we'll see. And secondly, at the moment, we're also working as a side project in chaotic surveillance. So you have some sort of camera or a UAV that moves chaotically. And we are going, we, what we want to do is apply this sort of maps with different mean values uh, to the motion of the camera or to the motion of the UAP and observe if it behaves better or worse. Again, this is a very big topic. Uh, it requires a lot of simulations and also a hardware implementation. But this is something we aim to do at the uh, future. So overall, you know, uh, we are at a very good point. We have some dynamical theory, a dynamical systems theory result at the moment. We have a very wide family of maps possibly many applications to consider in the future. But what we are going to focus on during the summer is uh, some more uh, maps to develop, you know, uh, some application to cost-based optimization and possibly chaotic surveillance. But after we finish all this, I think there is a lot of future in this family of maps. I mean, there are several more applications to consider next. So hopefully uh, we'll see about that in a few months. Uh, the good thing is that uh, there is a lot of potential in this family of maps, and we are going to explore a lot more applications in the future. So uh, thank you for your attention, and you can ask me any questions that you have.